The car, racing in circles, kicking up dust, has a surprise. Nobody is driving. The car is driving by itself. It has a name, Shelly, but it doesn't have a driver. It's not a remote control uh, car. All of the uh, intelligence that does this is on board. It resides in a computer there. It takes off. Yes, it does Whoa. everything by itself. <laughs> But when the Stanford University researchers offered me a bumpy spin in the driverless car, they didn't let me go alone. So why are you behind the wheel? Um, just for safety reasons. Turns out Shelley's computers are still learning to drive. We are still working on it. You're still working on it and I'm sitting here? Yes. <laughs> By this fall, they want the car to do something like this. Race to the top of Colorado's Pikes Peak with nobody at the wheel. The Audi TTS has been given a GPS system accurate within an inch and brains designed to take a beating. It's just a ruggedized computer so it can handle all the bumps and bounces and heat and things like that. Researchers at Stanford have been working on driverless cars for years now. Now this is completely hands off, okay? I want you to appreciate this yeah. because your life is in our hands. In 2005, they took me for a ride in a car named Stanley. Car. Trust me, trust the car. Stanley's driving style was cautious, but Shelley is all about speed. In a test at the Bonneville Salt Flats, it clocked 130 miles an hour. Well, it may seem pretty risky to hand the controls of a speeding car to a computer. Much of what this is about is removing risk for drivers. So the very same algorithms that we're running on this vehicle, we could actually put on a car and have it assist you. So the technology that's meant to help this car race up Pikes Peak without going off a cliff may one day keep regular drivers from going off the road. But there's another motivation as well. Why do this? Well, well it's cool. Very cool. John Blackstone, CBS News, San Jose, California.